What's going on guys? It's Nick here, back with another video. It's Saturday, it's time to go over the biggest ADP changes over the last week. I'm going to a wedding this weekend, so I have to record this a day early. And so it's actually the biggest risers and followers over the last six days, not a full week, but close enough, especially for early July. One very quick shout out before we start, auction rankings now have Superflex added in. Some of you have asked about adding that, so I did. All right, who's moving up and down? So we'll start off with the biggest risers, where Mark Ingram is again at the top. You guys know my take. I did this last week. He was a riser last week. I still feel the exact same way. I think it's incredibly optimistic to think that he's just going to go right back, which I've seen plenty of people say. He's going to go right back to being like, you know, that running back one, running back two that he was when Ingram has missed time years ago. He's not the same running back that he was. There's no guarantee they're not going to bring someone else in. There's no guarantee when that's going to happen. It's not a guarantee that Kamara is suspended for the first six weeks of the season. So a lot of unknown there for people, who, you know, are trending towards taking him in like the 14th round. It's getting a bit aggressive. It's still a pass for me. Rashad Penny up another half round uh, now going in the mid ninth. I'm fine with this rise since, you know, right now he's the lead back. He's the number one. And it's pretty rare you're getting a number one running back who, I mean, obviously we saw the ceiling late last season, obviously has a massive ceiling this late. So I'm, I'm totally fine taking him. But if you watched, I guess for you guys, that would be yesterday's video. And you know that I think he does have like a decent chance of busting. Not only is this Rashad Penny we're talking about, he's busted like, you know, first three years of his career, effectively busted last season. He only played five healthy games. And now we don't have Russell Wilson. He's definitely going to be stuck now with Geno Smith or Drew Locke. This is going to be the worst offense in football, slow paced team, uh, predictable offense, going to run it pretty much every play, but like not be good at it. And so it's a pass for me most of the time, especially if it's going to be, you know, an increase in ADP. If there was no um, Kenneth Walker, if they had, you know, even a mediocre quarterback, maybe I would have a different take. But again, this is the worst offense in football. I believe in Ken Walker's talent. I believe that at some point he could take over. And it's Rashad Penny we're talking about. He can easily bust. So I don't really think his ADP should be going up all that much. But I'm not like totally against it because, you know, it's late enough to where most of these picks are busts anyways. Uh, two risers I do agree with are Gus Edwards and Irv Smith. Gus, for the reasons I mentioned this past week regarding Dobbins and Irv because, you know, he looks fully healthy now and the offense is going to be very, very pass heavy, significantly, significantly more pass heavy than like in recent seasons. And he's a clear cut tight end one. Conklin's not there anymore. There's just, there's really no one else that he's competing for targets with at the tight end position. Both are a pap around. Like I said, Gus up into the, the early 14th round, Irv Smith into the mid 11th round. I have Gus as a mid 13th round pick, Irv mid 10th round pick. So both of them would have to rise about another round to stop being values. I think both are really, really solid picks. Among top 100 players, the top risers are Alan Lazard, Damian Harris, and Russell Gage. Lazard and Gage, I understand because Rodgers has talked up Lazard a lot. And whoever ends up being you know top target for the Packers is obviously going to be a great pick in fantasy. Obviously, they have you know a lot of vacated targets with Adams leaving. That's a lot of touchdowns. It's just a lot of you know really really high end usage, like very valuable targets. You know these aren't targets coming from Drew Locke and Geno Smith. These are coming from Aaron Rodgers. They're very very valuable. And so yeah, if Lazard ends up Lazard ends up being the one, like he's gonna be phenomenal. And so I understand that that rise is happening. Um, I still have him as a slight value right now, um, a fairly neutral pick. Uh, and whenever you can get, you know, a, a player with Lazard has upside, like a decent amount of upside at a neutral value or a decent value, I think it's a good pick. So I understand the rise. Uh, wouldn't be shocked if it keeps going up. That's one, like that whole kind of wide receiver core is when we're gonna have to watch in camp. And any news in camp in the preseason, that's really gonna change things. If like Lazard looks like a locked in one, not like wide receiver one, but on the offense, he's a locked in first target for Rodgers. You better believe his ADP is skyrocketing. And same thing could happen with Christian Watson. I think it's more likely Lazard's the one. But oh my goodness, if if reports start coming out that like Watson's tearing up camp and then he goes out there and he has like a monster preseason game, his ADP is going way up. So this is a team that's going to have a lot of variance come, you know, late July and really into like early and mid-August. Then you guys have heard my thoughts on Russell Gage probably a million times. I think he can be a top 20 receiver. I have him ranked 30th. So even with this rise that puts him at 35, I'm going to keep drafting him. 
Uh, you guys know I'm in Washington right now. I can't do underdog drafts. I really would like to return to New Hampshire and get uh, get those drafts uh, started up again. Uh, but continue on underdog, taking him until he hits, you know, that wide receiver 30. And even when that happens, he'll be a neutral value. So keep taking him until he rises even more. The one I don't agree with is Damian Harris. He's now the running back 29 off the board. He's my running back 32. So not a terrible pick. And there'll be plenty of times where, you know, he ends up being the 33rd running back drafted, and then you'd actually get him at a value. So I don't think the rise is like shocking or anything. I don't think it's terrible. I just don't think he should be going up right now. There's not really positive news surrounding New England. I really like Stevenson. I think they're going to pick one of White or Strong to be a passing down back. And so it's a very similar situation to the past, but now Stevenson isn't a rookie. And honestly, the Patriots got kind of lucky last season. They ended up like seventh i believe in points per game like they were a pretty high-end offense in total production but they got a little bit lucky in doing that they've lost a lot of offensive pieces of course mcdaniel's going to the raiders but he brought like you know the entire offensive coaching staff with him and so there's a little bit of risk that they don't have anyone that you know knows the system as much maybe they're changing the system a little bit like it's a little bit risky and so for him to be rising in adp knowing that he's not going to be catching passes knowing that stevenson's in year two and is a really really good prospect i don't know i don't really think his adp should be rising again not a terrible pick but i don't understand the rise only players inside the top 50 that rose more than like one one and a half spots are gabriel davis Brees hall travis Etienne, and terry mclaurin they're all up between like two or three spots, which actually is like a, a relatively significant rise for a top 50 player. Twitter has been arguing about Gabriel Davis for weeks now, but it's really ramped up this last week, I think, because ADP is rising. And you've basically been forced to like pick a side. Either he's going to smash his ADP and enter like the top 10 for fantasy, or he's going to be a complete bust. I'm leaning towards there actually being a third option where he's just a really talented young player playing behind Stefan Diggs, but on an elite offense. And so he'll have massive weekly ceilings, but a little bit higher variance than maybe some of the receivers going around him, just because there will be weeks where Diggs goes off, where they have production on the ground and where, you know, they score a lot of points, but they don't necessarily need him. And again, variance, because that'll be the low. And then the high is going to be, well, some weeks Diggs is only going to have six for 60 and Gabriel Davis is going to go nuclear. And so, I do think he's going to finish around this range, that wide receiver, like 17 to 25 range. It'll make him a perfectly fine pick for where he's going, one with a lower weekly floor, but with the upside to make up for it. Now, that's not really how you farm for likes on Twitter. And so you guys aren't going to see that take very much. It's like a weird thing where if you're on the extreme, that's what goes trending. And so that's what you're going to see. But the reality is definitely somewhere in the middle. Now, I actually have him ranked 28th. And so that indicates just seeing that number that he's overvalued. But that's why you always need to look at the projections, look at the value. There's a massive tier of wide receiver in my projections where the wide receiver 21 is projected for only five more points than the wide receiver 28. They're basically all the same pick. And so you can play that with ADP. You, you can kind of say, okay, maybe Davis is going right now. Maybe I do have to take Davis and then I can still get someone else from this tier in the next round instead of taking one from this tier knowing that you know, Davis is definitely going to be gone. So you have to understand the ADP game when you're looking at rankings and also look at rankings and then look at the projection. If you're looking between two players, don't say, oh, you know, he's a terrible pick being ranked as wide receiver 28. And you know, if he catches like two more balls, he's going to jump up to 20. So understand ADP combined with rankings. Uh, but again, I think he's a perfectly fine pick and definitely an upside pick. If you've kind of gone safer in the first few rounds, good pick for some upside. Uh, McLaurin also in that tier. Uh, so it's the exact same take. Like he's going as wide receiver 20. I have him as slightly undervalued, but like by a few points, you know, if I were to go in and change the projection for Washington and give them like one more touchdown, he might jump up in the rankings. Like it's so close that you need to understand it's really just one massive tier. And so I'm more than okay with where he's going in ADP and the rise is just because he signed the new contract. Then we've got Hall and Etienne. I posted, you know, a 17 minute video talking about these two along with Cam Akers on Thursday. So, you know, that's a super in-depth take. You should probably just watch that video. I'm not going to go over both these guys in depth again. But in short, both great picks, both great young prospects that I believe are going to perform well this season and beyond. My lean is Etienne overhaul in all formats except for standard. But please don't play in standard formats. 
That's it for risers. How about fallers? Uh, Gronk and Brait are now the biggest fallers, or at least, you know, in the top five. And Gronk's the biggest. Brait's like in the top five for fallers. Um, one week after I made fun of you guys for making them the biggest risers, which made absolutely no sense. I uh, have the same take as before. If you really want Gronk in the last round of like an 18 team format, or an 18 uh, round format, not team, uh, like, like your very last round, go for it. You know, it's not really going to hurt your team. It's the last round pick anyways. And if he returns, cool, you got some value. If he doesn't, just drop him. It's fine. Um, and then Brait, I mean, I'm not going to be drafting him. But if you want him in the last round, that's fine too. Uh, but personally, I would just stay away from all these tight ends on this team and retired tight ends. Um, we have our weekly Titans wide receiver market update. Uh, Traylon Burks is down another half round while Woods is up about a spot, maybe a little bit over a spot. I said last week that I expect them to both be within like 10 spots of each other come August and that both both should kind of like approach pick 100. Um, it's not going to be like they're going to converge at exactly 100, but they're going to kind of both approach that pick. Um, Burks is now at pick 90 and Woods is at pick 102. So that convergence to like 10 spots away is happening a little bit faster than I thought was going to happen. I have Burks at 105, so I'm still not drafting him, but... I understand jumping on board now, and it's really just about timing the market. Um, the most likely time for Burks to like change a lot in ADP is going to be when camp's open, because right now we've had all negative news, and now there's no camp. So it's really, really dry with news. Uh, nothing's really coming out. And so all people have heard for Burks is negative. And so that's going to continue dropping his ADP, as that's all people really have when they look him up. But if camps come out and let's say he's still not performing great, like he's going to keep falling, but it's not going to be by like that much. And so if you draft him kind of, I wouldn't say now, I'd say in like a week or so, he's probably going to be a little bit cheaper next week. And if reports come out negative once camps open in later July, he'll drop, but it won't be by that much because he's already been dropping from negative news. But if camps open and it's like, now he's on the field, now he's commanding targets, now he's the one. He's going to skyrocket. So I think like in one week is probably going to be the optimal time to draft Traylon Burks to get those shares. And many of you have been fading him all off season. And like, I don't have very many shares of him and many of you probably don't either. And so if you draft him like in one week, you're going to be getting him likely at the cheapest part of the entire summer. And if the news comes out where like he's actually playing well and he's going to be using this offense, he's going to jump up probably around two rounds. And it's going to be really valuable because that means, you know, maybe like 90% of teams that have him, if he ends up being good, will have him multiple rounds ahead of where you got him. And so now you gain a significant edge. So I would say in one week, it's probably the time you want to like really start targeting him. But I've also been in drafts. The ones that I have of him, the shares I have are when he's cratering. He's cratered in a few drafts and that's what's driving down his ADP. And so pay attention to that. You know, if he does start to go like past pick 100, it's not a bad time to really start taking him because he can only be so bad in the offense. Kind of has to do something. Uh, yeah, that's my general take on like the, the Titans wide receiver core uh, right now. Kamara uh, down a little bit more. He's down to pick 31, which is like the mid third round in a 12 team league. Remember I said in a 12 team league, the like a great spot to take him, I think is the late third round. And so I still stand by that. I think that if you get to that spot, that means you have two rock solid picks in the late first and early second round. Then you have an early fourth round pick. And so if you want to take them in the late third round, by all means do it. And it's probably going to work out really nicely for you. And he's approaching that ADP. I don't expect him to go past late third, early fourth, because that just gets egregious, like people overreacting way too much. I kind of think he's going to stabilize in this like mid to late third round. But I think it's a good spot. And so if he's there... At this point, personally, I'd probably take him. All the Jets wide receivers are down for some reason. Uh, and it's it's weird because like sometimes things just make no sense. Like ADP's change, but not for like a good reason. There's no new news that like makes it seem like the Jets gonna be way worse than we thought. Um Zach Wilson is actually up in ADP a little bit, so he's up a little bit. Corey Davis is down a half around, Garrett Wilson's down four spots, Elijah Moore's down two spots, so and that doesn't make any sense to me. If you think Wilson's better than before, why are all of his pass catchers worse? That makes no sense. Um, I'm pretty confident there's been no new news about the Jets, but I guess I could be wrong. But I really just think it's people not liking that offense. Um, I wouldn't call Corey Davis ever a top target. Like he's just like a fine guy to get late if you need a wide receiver in that range. Um, I think Garrett Wilson's a fine pick. Uh, not against him. Not like 
super for him. I think he's just like fine. But Elijah Moore, I think if his ADP keeps falling, like I really, really like Elijah Moore. I think he's a great prospect, a great player. I'll be perfectly happy to get him uh, at another discount. Patrick Mahomes, probably the last one we're going to go over today. This one is one I need your help on. Like he's down four spots. Now the clear quarterback three behind Herbert. They were neck and neck for a while. Now it's pretty clear that Mahomes is being taken after Herbert. Um, pretty close to Lamar now, actually. Now I have Mahomes projected pretty clearly ahead of Herbert. And maybe this is something that I need to look at more into the projections as to why that's happening. But I have the Chargers pretty significantly as a better offense than Kansas City. But I still have, you know, Mahomes projected better than Justin Herbert. Just because, I mean, there's a little bit more production that goes to the running backs um, for the Chargers. Whereas, like, you know, I don't view Kansas City as, like, a fantastic rushing offense, if that makes sense. Now, both are obviously fantastic. Obviously, you'd love getting either of them on your team. Um, and I know that you guys aren't necessarily targeting this range. I know that we've talked a lot about that mid-range. Um, many of you like double dipping at quarterback late. And so I know a lot of you don't target Mahomes and Herbert. But I want to pass that question off to you guys. Like, do you think it is clear that Herbert is better than Mahomes in fantasy? Do you think that that should be the ranking? Let me know your thoughts on that. Um, again, I don't think so. And I, I did look at the rankings a little bit before this. And like, I was moving things around. And it's still kind of difficult for me to get Herbert ahead of Mahomes, even with Tyreek Hill off the roster, even regressing the offense, regressing him. It's still Mahomes over Herbert. But let me know. That's the question I'm passing off to you guys. Again, what do you think? I'll, I'll revisit after the video, but how would you rank those two? So those are the biggest risers and fallers over the last week. We are very close to the time of year where, you know, a ton of drafts start happening. And so please make sure you sign up for access to the site, you know, before your draft is happening, before the day before your draft is happening, because there's a lot of information there. There's a lot of information to read, to go over, to analyze, to kind of like absorb. And so if you do that right before your draft, like you'll be fine. You can just use the rankings and you'll, you'll perform really well, but you'll be even better off if you can read through everything, look at all the information, understand it all, do some mock drafts, you know, with that information. Like it just makes so much more sense to get it like, you know, multiple weeks before your draft, not right before it. Some people do it right before they end up fine, but I recommend looking at everything a few weeks before your draft, and then you'll be fully prepared once that ro rolls around. So check that out at my website, thefantasyfootballvice.com. I'll be back Monday, another episode of Mock Draft Monday. Tuesday, maybe a live stream. It depends on my flight. It depends what happens there, but maybe a live stream on Tuesday. Then Wednesday, another strategy video. That, my friends, is into this one. Hope you all enjoy. If you did, have a hang the like button, and how about subscribing to the channel if you're new here. Thanks for watching.